Hello everyone, this is Pedro Romero reporting on the 2021 LCS Summer Split. I have here with me the mid laner for Counter Logic Gaming, Paul Belter, um, who just came off of a defeat to 100 Thieves to finish off week 5, 0 and 3. Um, Paul Belter, I know it's uh, it's tough to talk uh, after this kind of game, but um, how are you doing, man? Um, could be better. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'd like to know um, your overall thoughts regarding this week. I mean, you guys had um, not only that, not only the recent game against Hundred Thieves, but um, you faced off against G um, Evil Geniuses and Golden Guardians and lost to that. So, um, I'd like to know your overall thoughts regarding those games and the team's performance um, from those games. Yeah, um, we're not doing very well right now, and. It's pretty frustrating, for sure. Um, a lot of stuff in the game that's going wrong. Just a lot of things going wrong. I think we just have to stay calm and try and fix them one by one. You know, just take the lessons we can get from each game and each failure and try and fix it before it's too late. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and looking into that um, latest match against 100 Thieves, um, you were... You guys were um, rather close um, with your opponents regarding to the kill score and the goal deficit until um, you guys suffered that ace during that um, third Cloud Drake fight in favor of 100 Thieves. Um, I'd like to know what went wrong within that play. Um, I think overall they were playing as a unit a lot better than us. Like. Um just the way they're spacing out each champion. And I think we got sucked in too deep, pretty much. Their flankers were able to access our backline instead of us like keeping our formation. So it was just a play that completely flipped the game. Uh, I think they got like the Drake, they got the Baron. We were like stacking waves to contest that third dragon. So it was just overall really bad outcome for the game. Mm -hmm. Um, and since going, since you guys went 3-0 in, back in week 3, um, the team has made, um, rather unorthodox picks, um, specifically, um, for yourself and, um, Roxa, the, the jungler. Um, you guys chose Lissandra, Trondo, and then Rek'Sai twice, um, in this week. And so, um, I'd like to know, like, um, were those, um, selections for the draft made, um, at that moment on stage, or were they already planned um, heading into the heading into the games? Um, I think it's definitely been a pre-planned thing. I do think we need to change the way we we're drafting. Of course, I don't think we're we've been doing it in a way that sets us up for success. Um, you know, it's it's like part draft and part us just playing poorly. And I think the difficulties we're having in draft also comes down to, you know, player champion pools and things like that as well. But I think it's stuff we need to fix moving forward. I think when we had that one really successful week where we went 3-0, it was sort of like a band-aid to our problems. But once that got solved out, um, there wasn't really much substance that and like strength that we could use to keep winning our games. So. I think we need to build up that um, stability. Right, right, right. Um, after playing um, against um, Golden Guardians in the first day of week five, um, Smoothie, the support, um, did a scrum interview. And in that scrum interview, he said that the team wasn't prepared for um, the lane matches, specifically in the top lane and jungle, um, as you might remember, um, both um, Finn and Broxel were very behind from the outset of that match. Uh, and so, considering the current state of the team, um, does this lack of preparation happen like like often, or are there are there other issues that impede your play? Uh, and i'm and I'm saying this like on a on a broad sense, if you can explain. Um. Well, I think if we're talking about the Golden Guardians match, I think rather than it being like an extreme 
something extreme, which I think you're saying, like, oh, players don't know their matchups or things like that. I think they were able to set up a really good play that set us really far behind early with the top dive that we weren't prepared for. And that ended up having, like, really big repercussions throughout the game. Um, you know, it was, it was a mistake that shouldn't have happened, though, for sure. And so um, now looking into um, the entire year so far, um, back in spring, um, you were moved to the academy team for a little bit before then eventually making your way back to the main roster. Um, although your time there with the academy team was short, um, did you learn what form of lesson, what sort of lesson did you learn that helped you conduct yourself now um, in the summer split? Um, yeah, that was, wow, it feels like so long ago, but, um, I think I was able to learn some more leadership skills. Um, I think a lot of the guys on the academy team were pretty new to competitive play. So I felt like I was able to, um, understand a bit better how to like lead the game. Uh, I was able to teach a lot to the academy guys. I think that's the main thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so sticking with the academy team, have you been keeping up with the COG academy team? And um, if so, um, which player do you think fans should watch out for in the future? Um, well, recently, mostly just been focused on trying to improve my own play and trying to figure out how I can best help the main team because we're, you know, we're not doing that well right now. So <laughs> I think it's hard to say, um, yeah. Understandable, understandable indeed. And so, I'm uh, moving on. Um, you had a lengthy event, and a, you had a lengthy and an illustrious and a rather eventful career so far in the LCS. Um, I mean, one might even write a book about it. Um, within that facet, highlights such as you winning the LCS title with with COG back in summer 2015, and those back to back titles with Team Liquid back in 2018 will be regarded as your highlights. Um, if there was a book made about your career, um, how would you title your second current stint with COG thus far? How would I title it? Uh, I'm not sure because it's not finished yet. So I think we still have a lot of time left. Well, you know, not that much time, I suppose, but there's still time left in the season to fix our mistakes. Um, the most important thing is making sure we can secure a playoff spot for now. Um, the last weeks have definitely been pretty disappointing, pretty frustrating, but I'm not the type to just give up. And I don't think anyone else on the team is either. So we're just going to continue to fight, continue to work on our mistakes, just try and get better day by day after every match. Um, even though it's a tough process, even though it's really difficult to be in the situation, uh, we want to give it our all for sure. And then maybe when the season is done, I can let you know what the title of that book would be. Indeed, indeed. Um, and now, as you as you mentioned, the playoffs. Um, you're still, um, you're still in the bottom third of the of the standings, and so. Um, back in the scrum interview you did um, all those weeks ago, you said that the team's main goal was to reach Worlds, um, be it by hook or by crook. Um, as the fight for making the playoffs gets tighter, do you feel that the team's goal is changing, just, is changing from reaching Worlds to just reaching playoffs no matter what? Um, yeah, I think we need to take it one step at a time. For sure. I think it's important to have short-term goals and long-term goals. So we can say the long-term goal is to make it to Worlds, but the short-term goal for now, you know, we have, we gotta, we gotta get some wins on the table. We gotta approach each game as a life or death situation and try our best to win each and every single game because every single one of those games, win or lose, is going to count on whether or not we can make that goal. Indeed, indeed, and we'll look forward to COG's performance in in subsequent weeks in the summer split. Thank you so much, Paul Welter, for taking the time and answering my questions. And with that said, I'll see you guys later. Take care, everyone.